Monetary policy is controlled by the Federal Reserve, also known as the Fed. One tool the Fed used to have at its disposal was the discount rate. The discount rate is the rate that the Fed charged member banks for borrowing money overnight. Now, as you can tell from this graph, the discount rate tended to lie below the federal funds rate, which is the rate that banks charge other banks for borrowing money overnight. And since the Fed wants to be the lender of last resort, on October 2003, the Federal Reserve changed the term the discount rate to what's called the primary credit rate. And they set the primary credit rate 100 basis points, or 1%, above the federal fund's targeted rate. That way, if banks needed to borrow money, they would go to other banks and borrow money at the federal funds rate, rather than going to the Fed and borrowing at the higher primary credit rate. So let's say that the economy is in a deep recession, and the Fed wants to, this economy to pick up. It could, if it wanted to, it could lower the primary credit rate to add more liquidity in the marketplace. But this will happen most of the time only when there's emergency in the financial markets. If they lower the primary credit rate, then this will increase excess reserves by the banks if they borrow through the, this discount window at the primary credit rate. If banks borrow through this primary credit rate and their excess reserves go up and banks lend this money, then the money supply is going to increase. As the money supply increases, this will lower the nominal interest rate. Now, as you well know, people don't borrow because of nominal interest rates, but instead borrow because of real interest rates. And according to the Fisher equation, if the nominal rate goes down and people expect the economy to get better, then the expected inflation rate will go up. And if the expected inflation rate goes up as nominal rates are going down, then the only thing that could happen to real rates is real rates will go down. Now, we're going to put an investment demand curve in here. As the Federal Reserve lowers the primary credit rate, which increases excess reserves and banks lend, this increases the money supply, which lowers the nominal rate, which also lowers the real rate. As the real rate goes down, then the quantity of investment, the quantity of investment goes up. And as investment goes up, then this will shift aggregate demand to the right. As aggregate demand shifts to the right, this will increase real GDP or output. So as aggregate demand increases, real GDP or output goes up. As real GDP and output go up, then the employment rate goes up. As more goods and services are produced in the economy, then employment goes up. Obviously, if employment is going up, then unemployment is going down. In other words, during a recession, unemployment is greater than the full employment rate or the natural rate of unemployment. So as we get out of the recession, the unemployment rate goes down. As you can tell then, as aggregate demand increases, this has an upward pressure on prices, and so the price level rises as aggregate demand increases. We hope you understand more about the discount window and the primary credit rate when the Federal Reserve is looking at solving the problem of a recession in the economy.